Hey, this is Daniel from Matarama. I'm here in my studio in New York City with the Profoto B1. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about TTL. I find the TTL is one of those things that a lot of people use, but maybe don't fully understand how it operates. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, and then we're gonna make some photos. So this Profoto uses Profoto's own TTL system with an Air Remote. And then if you see here, it's got a value in the back, 8.4. So what the camera's gonna do is every time I make a photo, it's like an invisible photo assistant's gonna run out there, take a meter reading, and change the power of my light to give me the appropriate amount. So if I just randomly shoot a picture over here, you can see that basically if I change the power of my camera and I make photos, it's gonna use a different amount of power depending on what the camera thinks I need for a shot. So that's really great, and speed lights do the same thing. But what makes this system a little bit different and can be really cool, especially for a professional that wants to shoot, let's say, lots of photos and then go through and do mass editing later, once I have an exposure that I'm happy with, I can take my little controller here and I can switch it from TTL to manual. Once I do this, the light is now on manual and it will keep that exposure no matter where I put my camera. So that's important because once I have my setting, my settings the way I want it, I, all my photos will have the exact same exposure. One of the issues with TTL is that if you have like a changing background or even if somebody has really dark hair and light skin, you can end up with different exposures slightly on every single shot because again, it's metering every single time. So by using this kind of hybrid mode where you're gonna use TTL to establish your exposure and then manual to lock it in, can be really great for a professional, especially if you're working you know, quickly and you don't have time or an assistant, let's say, to grab a light meter. So let's go make some portraits of Tiffany over here by the window. So if I take head A, which is my soft box, I can turn it on and you see I have it in TTL. So my camera is set at 250 of a second. I'm gonna say like a, about an F5.6 because I don't want it to be too bright outside. And let's go make some photos by the window and see what we get. So I have Tiffany here over by the window and this is you know, a classic situation where TTL is gonna be tricked. I can pretty much assure you that the first frame out of this camera is gonna be too dark because the metering in the system in the camera is gonna see all this light coming from behind and it's gonna expose for that, making the front uh, fill a little bit dark. So we can adjust for that and I'll show you how to do that, but let's start with making a photo at the zero setting. Good. Nice. Okay, so I've got my first photo and as predicted, it's, it's dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on top of my controller here to my A channel and I'm gonna give it a little bit more power. I'm gonna tell it to overexpose. I think by about a stop and a half. You can either do it in tenths like that, or if you hold it down, it jumps up a full stop. So I'm gonna give it a stop and a half, and we're good. So again, because I'm in TTL, it's still metering every single time, but now it's gonna meter and then overexpose by a stop and a half. Good, there we go. Nice. Ah, much better. So now I've got a properly exposed photo. I can, I can do a few different things here. If I want more or less depth of field, I can change my aperture. And because I'm working in TTL, the flash power will adjust automatically. If I want the, just the background brightness to go up and down, though, I can change my shutter speed. And uh, some cameras are capable of high-speed sync, and the new upgrade to this is also capable of that, so I can go above the maximum sync speed, but I kinda don't want the sky to be too dark. I wanna keep this light and airy, so I think I'm actually gonna reduce my shutter speed a little bit to uh, 200th of a second and see what that looks like. Good. So again, I have a properly exposed flash picture, and my background's a little bit brighter. Um, let's just see if it looks a little bit nicer, though, if I jump down to F4. So you can see one advantage of this pro photo is how fast I can shoot. If you're working with speed lights, especially battling the sun like this, you're gonna be racking out at half power, possibly even full power, especially in a box like this. And you're gonna to have to wait five, six seconds or invest in like a quantum battery or something to be able to shoot faster. And that's just more pieces of equipment to deal with. Um, the power of the B1 is 500 watt seconds. I can end with TTL, really nice. So that's how you'd use uh, the B1 to balance against available light. Let's say I wanted to do a more formal type of portrait shoot where I want to bring my model in and do like a three-point lighting on her. I can actually use the A, B, and C channels to adjust my brightness of each light independently. So come over uh, here, Tiffany, please. So I've got over here a Pro Photo Magnum reflector. This light here I have instead in my B channel. So if you remember, I can go over to my B and I can hit head, that turns it on. I'm gonna go back to A and I'm gonna, which is my softbox, and I'm gonna bring that back down to zero so that we're starting from scratch. Also, the first light that I showed you in the channel C, I'm gonna also turn that one on. That one, it has a grid on it. So we're gonna have our main light here. We're gonna set up this uh, strip bank as a kind of like a hair light on our side, and then we're gonna put a little circle of light with a grid in the background. So again, everything's set at zero. Let's see what the camera recommends. Because I have so much available light in the studio I wanna compensate for, I'm gonna to go to 250 again on my shutter speed. In fact, if I'm gonna go 250, I'm gonna go F8. 
looking good. Great, so what we have here is a really well exposed shot on her, but my hair light is the same exposure as my front light, so it doesn't look like a hair light, it just looks lit, like flat. And then my background is actually gray. The reason for that is your meter in your camera is trying to produce gray when it's looking at things because it's a reflective style meter, not an instant meter, which means that I have to do two things right off the bat. I have to turn up the power of my softbox to get more hair light and turn up my background power. So I'm just gonna go to channel C, which is my background, and I'm gonna bring that up a stop. And I'm also gonna go to B, which is, nope, I'm gonna go to A, which is my softbox, and I'm gonna bring that up a stop as well. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Good. So I have my, my main key light on her face exactly where I want it. I have the background light exactly how I like it, which is like a little kiss of light. But the hair light is not bright enough for me. Because I've reached the maximum uh, range on the TTL, I'm going to switch to manual to, to make that happen. So if I take my controller here, and I switch to manual, my A light is my softbox. I can hold it down for a second and go up two stops. So now my other two lights stayed where they were and this went up two stops. Perfect. Now I'm getting nice shape in the back of the hair. That's one of the places where you have to kind of tell your flash what to do. The TTL is only so smart. It's looking for a nice flat, even exposure. It doesn't know I want a lot of contrast in the hair. So it can be forgiven for that. Okay. Good. Good. Well, there you go. So this new Profoto TTL system really helps you shoot quick in the studio, saves you a lot of time, and once you master it, you can get the lights exactly where you want them very, very quickly. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Ad Armor TV, and I'll see you next time on set.